So as we move into the CBD uh, time period, so usually about 18 months before, we start to meet as a group of program directors for the specialty at the Royal College. And usually that will mean two to three three-day meetings. Uh, the first one will be to initiate the entire group to the process of CBD and to maybe start working on an EPA. The second session is really to work out all the EPAs that the, the specialist, the specialty committee and the program directors want to see and how to start that implementation. And sometimes a third meeting is just to finalize the entire process. We'll find that this is an exciting process. I think it's uh, an exciting time to be in medical education as we look at a new way uh, and a better way of doing things. Uh, I think it's important to remember that the Royal College will be there to support you in this transition and that group of, of uh, the specialty committee with all the program directors really does play a big part in making this transition. We're looking at this as a national curriculum now uh, and a lot of program directors in my specialty have found that very rewarding and have found that that's much more empowering than, it, than previously because you're not just working yourself in an isolated way as program director of otolaryngology and neck surgery in Ottawa but your team of all program directors is helping you to make this transition. That the postgrad office has been a tremendous support in giving us tools uh, and supporting our transition to this model. So it's going to be very difficult um, as we transition to competency-based medical education, integrating our current senior residents with the new cohort of residents coming in and moving through this new program. I think senior residents at times are going to look at the implementation of this new program and go, well, well, maybe this could have affected my training. It's unfortunate that I wasn't exposed to this. But at the same time, I think they should see the benefit and say, you know, I'm going to get more direct supervisor feedback. This is going to better prepare me for when I transition to being a staff physician in this new model. And I'm going to have kind of the benefit of being exposed to it from a little bit uh, a step back and not just um, expected to implement it with this new type of learner. So I think for program directors that are already busy with the day-to-day -day activities of a, of a regular residency program, they should consider the possibility of asking for help and potentially um, what we have done is developing an associate program director position. Someone who is uh, able to focus on the CBD related changes and also coordinate that with existing program functionality. They should think about maintaining what's good about their classic program and merging that with the new CBD program. In addition, making sure that any new opportunities that you're providing for CBD residents be also offered to the existing cohort because I find these residents see a new way of learning and definitely want to jump on this as well. As a program director, providing uh, information and education and how to provide feedback is always useful. So there's definitely a role for that. I think that many of our faculty provide good feedback. They just provide it verbally. And if it's provided verbally, the trainee may only catch a portion of it. Uh, the program director never necessarily hears about it. And so we are unable to develop sort of a coherent way for the trainee to take that feedback and turn it into a mechanism to learn. I think it's also important to communicate with members in your department in many different ways. So if you have a group that happens to be big Twitter followers, then absolutely communicate by Twitter. But don't stop there, because there are other users who use Facebook. There are people who like to look at internet sites. There are people who prefer email. There are people who never read any of those things and prefer grand rounds. When you're communicating the information, make sure that you disseminate the information in as many ways as possible. And that'll be the surest way to encourage discussion within the group. Over time, what I've seen, my own personal experience, and again, this is no different with any new rollout of any program, uh, there's always going to be some hesitancy in understanding what the reason for the change is. People will eventually come around, but you need to saturate the environment with the information and make sure that you've got experts in the department who are able to speak to any concerns that people raise and listen to their concerns. My experience from implementing CBEME in our own program is that it's an evolving process. Um, but that's no different than any training program that we've had in the past. Um, I'm heavily involved in the accreditation process of our residency program and that is 
At its core, it's quality improvement. It's all about looking at whether or not a program is able to constantly evaluate what it's doing well and what it could be doing better to meet the accreditation standards. So in that way, our programs are never fail or pass. They're just, what are they doing well and what could be, they be doing better? Competency-based education training programs are no different. And as we roll these out, if it's not perfect the first time around, that doesn't mean that we can't continue to strive to make it perfect. And so this too will be an ongoing process of quality improvement where we're implementing new things, we're implementing new evaluation and assessment methods. We may be changing the wording that we're using from blocks to modules, but ultimately the goal of this should be that we're, we're trying to train the best residents possible and there's always room for improving the way that we're doing it. Uh, the most important thing is to start planning early um, and to, to make some friends. Make some friends who are educators, make some friends who are in your specialty at different schools who are still also going through the transition and make some friends in the Department of Postgrad Medical Education and build a team around you that can help you navigate the transition. I think my best advice for any program would be that you need to come up with a situation or a solution that is unique to your own program. We have programs that have two residents, we have other programs that have 80, but you do need to remember that you, you definitely need one person who likely is going to be the champion, the lead, the knowledge expert in terms of being able to put the nuts and bolts into a program that may already be running. And again, that's going to be very individual. Look to see what other people have done in the past and also to look nationally and locally to see what other people are doing. So don't reinvent the wheel. Um, there's lots of different um, information through the Royal College as well as the American College of Graduate Medical Education on where to start and where to begin. So don't be developing uh, the specific assessment tools, different terms of reference all on your own. So build upon the work of others. As well, when you're thinking locally, um, the university has provided lots of information to help uh, provide faculty development, so definitely utilize that. Develop your CBT, CBD team within your department, but as well nationally, uh, to share all the resources that have been created. I think the biggest advice we can give program directors now is don't panic. Um, that uh, a, a lot of the things that you're already doing are still going to be there. They may just be labeled differently. I would tell program directors that there are gonna be bumps in the road, for sure, but that the end of it, it's probably going to make your life easier um, because you will have more data points, you will have more information, um, and hopefully it will make it a smoother process when you do meet that resident who's in difficulty where it's not not doing well needs to do better there will be very tangible things that somebody can work on and it'll make it a lot easier to develop a plan to improve that i think people are worried that you know now we have a five-year program and someone's going to take three years to do that program and someone's going to take eight years to do that program i think we're going to see that the vast majority of people are still going to be on the projected trajectory um, because I do think that our programs are currently well developed and that if we think it takes five years, it probably takes about five years for most people. For that person who's a little bit ahead or a little bit below the curve, it'll be a lot easier to kind of recalibrate that person. Program directors, I would say it's not going to be flawless uh, and there will be some bumps, but if we put in the work properly now and we, we put a lot of checks and we recalibrate ourselves frequently, um, we are probably, I really do think that we are going to end up with a better education system for our residents. If we're not disseminating what we do, then kind of half the point of it is lost. Other people are really interested to know what you're doing. I think these publications are uh, like really in demand across the education world and across sort of specialty journals as well.